I'm Danny Strakel from Spirit Walk Paranormal. He is also a robot. You want me to, you want Welcome me. back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want you to do it. You want me to do it? You want me to do it? <laughs> the dicks have to wait until at least 15 seconds into you the episode. Thanks for tuning in again to Wasted Local Talent. Um, I'm back again with Jed. Yes. Cecily. Hey. And Christopher. Hi. Christopher <laughs> Rabidom. Rabidou. You bald fuck. Rabido. <laughs> Rabido. So much shade. Rabido's libido. Yes. So, Jed, who do we have this week on? You don't have that information? Yeah, I don't know who's on this <laughs> episode. Uh, Danny Strakel with Spirit Walk Entertainment. Yes. Okay. Danny Strakel, mm-hmm. yeah. He does uh, paranormal videos. He goes around and records paranormal videos. I'm pretty excited to hear this one because I was only in it for the first. Yeah, Jed had to get up and leave because portion. he needed to get his swole on. Or well, no, I did need to go to the gym, but I think I also had to finish homework. That's true. Yeah. That's what he says. I don't believe well, that. that's a shame. I it was also I done on, a, on an odd day because we did it like a Tuesday night, yeah. like yes. really late, yeah. really late. Shots fired because he was like an hour late. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. We love looking Danny. at you, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, um, he's got um, his first full season is out now, and he's actually beginning to film his second season here soon, which uh, some of us might actually be making an appearance. A little cross promo, uh, twenty nineteen. So. We do like a wasted local talent episode on Spirit Walk. I'm really excited. I'm excited too. <clears throat> I hope he be doesn't like, pull that in. Supernatural <laughs> crossover. <laughs> it, it would be. There's gonna be like a ghost here. <laughs> He's gonna I hope so. bring that. It's actually just gonna be me. I'll be dead by then. So Dad, you will be. <laughs> you keep eating forty Burger King nuggets <laughs> at a time, and that will happen. I don't care if they're ten for a dollar, Jed. I'm worried about you. <laughs> You can't stop this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> could only hope to contain it. And we can't. No. And we can't. Not even my pants anymore can contain it. Do you have a lot of, like, worn out spots in your drawers? Oh, yeah. Or are you a commando guy because there has been so many drawers lost because of your... No, I keep... I keep the friction from your I package. keep the drawers in place. <laughs> do you like it high and tight or do you like it to flop around? I like it high and tight. High and tight? Yeah. I gotta Does have anyone like contain it to flop around? I mean, well, so like I, I people have are to very do, anti. I guess smush. I gotta do the, the high and tight because it. I got I got a nice set of cheeks, mm. and so if I don't have something up in there to control everything, there's a lot of friction that goes on in there. Yeah. I did cheek. watch him door open a yeah. door yesterday with his ass. It was impressive. I did open a doorknob oh, with my ass. <laughs> what? Yesterday. He did. Yeah. With your butt crack. Yeah. Well, the cheek. I like flexed the cheek and opened the door. Yeah. <laughs> It was very yeah. impressive. Yeah. I was awestruck. I might be interested to find out how firm this was cheek is. Was it a bear cheek? Huh? Was it a bear cheek? No, 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 no it no, was no. through a pair of sweatpants. Why don't you oh, stand okay. up, get over here, let me squeeze <laughs> you. I got to know. I got to know. I'm coming. Let's Come on over here. We're going to get this. I'm going to get a picture. This is going on the Instagram. Yeah, put it on there. So tune in. Uh, yeah, check it out. Check out Wasted Local Talent I on Instagram. I want it Instagram. flexed, and then I want it not flexed. Not flexed. Not flexed first? No flex. <laughs> not flexed picture? Before we have the second uh, not flexed picture? No, I already got it. I already got it. I don't want you <laughs> looking at the camera. I want you like real reaction. Okay. <laughs> uh, first thing I got to say before we move on to the flexed <clears throat> buns is that I was surprised how firm the not flexed was. This guy definitely <laughs> does leg day. He loves the squats. Flex squeeze. God damn. It's like a rock. You're a very lucky woman. <laughs> Mrs. Jed. <laughs> Those are some impressive buns. Very impressive. I bet you the guy can crush a can with his butt cheeks. He could probably open well, a jar. Well, I'll make this quick because we are supposed to be doing an intro, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the reason for that is because when Jess and I first got together, you never met Jess, right? Yeah, she came to the show. She's okay, very sweet. Yeah, mm-hmm. so big ass, right? Huge. <clears throat> And huge, dunk, dunk. Huge. <laughs> huge, huge, huge. That's not fake news, by the way. And when we first got together, I was <laughs> like a, a rail, you know, nothing to me. And I was just like, this can't be, you know, I'm going to get broken in half. <laughs> so I started going with her and doing her gym workouts. And it was just nothing but squats and deadlifts and like all kinds of crazy variations of like one legged squats and just. Booty gains. Yeah. So this is <laughs> <Booty work. laughs> this is blood, sweat, and tears of yes. leg day. Multiple thrusts, 
Lots of thrusting. A lot of lunging. Yeah. A lot of deep, dipping. Deep, deep, deep groans. lunges. Yeah. Oh, my. A lot of pre-workout. Yeah. A little creatine for some recovery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't forget what. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you got the formula, so what are you yeah. going to do with it? So I one of our sponsors <laughs> is a apparel and goods based company. It's a wild and wonderful lifestyle company. I forgot. Wild and wonderful lifestyle company. They, oh God, I just moved my hand. Okay. Uh, they want to provide apparel and goods inspired by our wonderful state to the people that live here. Mm-hmm. And if there's one thing that I know about people from West Virginia, it's that we cannot have enough decorations in our home shaped like our state or WVU's logo. Yep, <laughs> pretty much. So, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, yeah, you should uh, buy their stuff. Check them out, wildwonderfullifestyle.com, or go to their Facebook. It's at wildwonderfullifestyleco, and their Instagram is, you, it's not listed in here, but I think it's at wild. It's wonderful just, lifestyle. It's just Wild and Wonderful Lifestyle on yeah. Facebook, and then their Instagram is at Wild Wonderful Lifestyle Co. Oh, well, you messed this yeah, all up. Yeah, what you, you sent me. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 I'm just great at what I do. I'm not. You're listening to this podcast. You know well. that I'm not great at what I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple more. Um, Cecily, how's about you uh, talk a little bit about uh, okay. Trash Mouth? Yeah. Well, tra- Trash Mouth Press. Uh, they create arts, prints, and other comics and whatnot. I have some stuff sitting right in front of me. It's pretty cute, honestly. So if you need designs or art or anything like that, definitely hit them up. Uh, their website is trashmouthpress.us. Uh, their Instagram is trashmouth.press. Super cool. <laughs> yeah. That ends this announcement. That, <laughs> end of this announcement. That's her first ever ad spot. Woo. It is. Go Trash Mouth Press. All right. (laughs) Now, if you're easily offended, skip the next 45 seconds to a minute because Chris is going to introduce another sponsor. Chris is going to be speaking. Chris is going to be talking. I'm going to plug something. (laughs) (laughs) It's Monday night. So you're like, Monday night football is over. What am I going to do? You need to go and check out the latest episode of the Gurus of Gaming podcast. Gurus of Gaming Podcast every Monday. <laughs> the gaming podcast by gamers. You got to know what it is. You got to find out that these guys are pouring their hearts and souls out there every week. Such as you can find out about Roger's inflatable lover named Jill Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> you can find out about Michael's fleshlight he calls Chung Lee. <laughs> You have Foamsby, who has a nice, warm pumpkin he puts in the microwave, (laughs) and he calls that one Scorpion. (laughs) That deep voice, though. (laughs) But they got the guys over there. They're doing the games. They're talking about it. I'm personally pumped for the Resident Evil 2 remake. Bro. Bro. In spite of the lonely sex references, because I do succumb to such loneliness. Same. You know, that's why I can relate. So check out the Gurus of Gaming podcast because they got the shit where you want it every Monday. Be sure to check out their Patreon at mm. patreon.com slash gurus of gaming. That is patreon.com slash gurus of gaming. Yes. And it's really funny that you mentioned like, you know, their sex life because they do this thing every episode where they, they level up and they have different um, things they level up on. It's Isn't like, it like performance, one of the categories. No, it's a uh, beard power, hygiene. Um, sex appeal and phallic stature. There we go. Yep. No. Phallic stature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. AKA dick size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that you, you say that. Um, also, uh, worst kept secret, they play Bender and a bunch of other music that, uh, let me, let me talk real quick before you go off on your rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they have graciously let us use Bender in our podcast. It's a song that you hear at the beginning and most of the end of the, of the episodes. Did I tell you that Pat Cole added me on Facebook? It's about time. Finally. No, it's official. Of course, you, you, see you weren't here for the man every yeah. day. Um, but yeah, uh, Bender by Worst Kept Secret. You can check them out on Facebook just by f- searching Worst Kept Secret. And then their Instagram is Worst Kept Secret WV. And then you know, check them out on Spotify, iTunes, any streaming site. And be sure to request Bender 
live at when you because... see worst <laughs> yeah. at a venue near you. <clears throat> they next love time, that. The yeah, next time that they that, play, they they it yeah, they did. Um, I even told him that I would sing it with him, and he still said no. Um, but next time we go, <laughs> um, we're getting. We all need to go. We all need to get shirts made. That shirts play made. bender. We need to get banners, banners, signs to hold up in the crowd. Yes, even if it's like to nobody, and we're the only four fucking people there. Let's do it. Maybe so we like need a to normal get normal worst case. <laughs> normal worst case. <laughs> we need. <laughs> we should get six people and go like uh, game day style, where we paint like a letter on our chest, oh, like yeah. spelling out bender. Dude. Okay. Let's do that. We got yes. four of us. We need I'm to get to free the nip life. So. That's fair. Free it up. <laughs> okay. Most venues we probably won't get down on that. <laughs> but talk about. We'll, we'll just do a chant. Bender. Bender. We're not doing that. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I'll throw something. One thing that we need to talk about throw before ass. we wrap this intro, though, is something very near and dear to my heart because I'm very concerned about you, Daniel. Did you ever sign up for your life alert package? I didn't. I keep forgetting. I can't find it. You could fall I've got too and much, not get up. Now I've that I can't keep much, an eye on you all the time, how do I know that you're safe? I've got too much mail from um, retirement, AARP, my 401k stuff. It's Weather's just getting Security. colder. It's, yeah. Any day now, you could just slip and break a hip walking down to pick up your unemployment check. <laughs> That's true. It's a very good possibility. nobody's going to know. I think the possibility of your head freezing from being too cold outside is definitely higher. That's than fair. me slipping mutually and concerning that's fair now i'm not gonna lie the other day i fell in the shower <laughs> 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 totally slipped and fell in the shower my hip is fine and they definitely don't lie so was that the injury that you came to the show with no no that, that was, was another a, hip <laughs> that was a hip ailment that, that happened a, while he was sleeping <laughs> that it did it literally no like it, osteoporosis i don't know what i don't know again. what had happened but like I, I went to the hospital because like i was having this pain in my side and it started to go into my chest, and I'm like, I mean, I'm not that old. I can't be heart failure. Corn oh, dogs, yeah, corn yeah. dogs can't do that, <laughs> can they? Um, and I went in, and they ran like EKG, uh, like all that stuff, and um, the muscle that connects your sternum to your rib cage had like got inflamed and torn, and it's still actually like a little sore now. I push on it. Still like a little bit sore, but um, but yeah, it was torn and like it was actually Don't shooting. Laugh. It was actually shooting pain into my chest, oh, so no. that, it worried me. Well, it's great <clears> to <throat> see that you're doing well and uh, you're drinking PBR I on am. the job. Like you're doing doctor. weller, weller. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm never well. More well. <laughs> More well. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> um, follow us on Facebook <laughs> and Instagram at Wasted Local Talent and Twitter if you're into that kind of thing at Wasted Local. And check out Spirit Walk Paranormal. Yes. Oh, shit. I forgot we were even talking about them. Look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. Here's Danny. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> there you go. What's up, everybody? I'm Daniel. And I am Jed. <laughs> Today we're wasting our <laughs> talent with... My name is Danny Strakel. I run a Spirit Walk Paranormal, the paranormal investigative web series based in uh, West Virginia here. So, growing up here... I, I mean, I'm sure that most of the people that are listening that are from West Virginia probably know, but West Virginia's got a lot of spooky places. Oh, you have mm -hmm. no idea. Like big time spooks. Big time spooks. All over the place. We have monsters. We have ghosts. We yeah. have water monsters, Bigfoots, a.k.a. the Yahoos, which, I mean, I guess that just comes from Appalachian dialect is how we got that one. Because everywhere else it's just like Yeti, uh, that's like the... So Yehu? Yeah, the Yehu. Wow. Yeah. It's the most I've West never, Virginian thing I've ever heard. I've never even heard of that one. It's like the mince, mispronunciation of uh, your favorite chocolate milk. But <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just called the Yehu. Because wow. uh, I guess that, that's their, like, call. The way that they, like... Because I guess from each different region, just how, like, people, you know, they have their own different dialects. I guess so do the Squatches. Squatch. Mm -hmm. And our Squatch... I just thought that was the crackheads yelling at night. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's just personal. <laughs> well, I mean, we we are in that that state where uh, you know meth and pills, you know, run amok, mm -hmm. and so do squatches. <laughs> they they run a mess in these hills, man, and so do ghosts. Like all fucking over. I'm allowed to curse, right? You, this, curse, this, is want, this is you. you. You talk about and say whatever you want. Good, because I fucking curse like a sailor. So. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I tried to keep it, like, the, the last podcast I did, 
it was pretty straightforward. I was just like, they were like, try to keep cursing to a minimum. And I'm mm. like, well, if I can't vape or drink or curse, you know, <laughs> you already knocked one out. So at least I got the other two. I was like, e- either or I'm fucked. So, yeah. But because well, wasted's about who you are as a person, it's about people getting to know you and your business. So if you don't want to be seen that way, then then don't curse. But it's up to you. Uh, I mean, we it, don't care. It's very like the show is very professional, except when I curse like a sailor. Which <laughs> when you're out in the field and it's dark and it's scary, uh, yeah, you kind of <laughs> tend to curse <laughs> a little just bit. Happens, yeah. yeah. If I'm like interviewing people or like talking to someone, like trying to get like a location secured, mm-hmm. you know, it's very professional. Oh yeah. Uh, like I'm always like spell checking my emails to people. Other than that, it's just like you're out there. Um, Middle of nowhere sometimes could be in the woods, and it's like I'm gonna quote spookier than all fuck out there. Mm-hmm. As I quoted myself for some fucking reason, but <laughs> it is spookier on like all fuck anywhere you go. And the places that I've seen, um, the things that I've heard with my own ears, uh, it's it's I don't I don't even know why I fucking do this like <laughs> I, I I'm terrified of the dark like 100% scared of the dark and I I don't know I guess it's just the spiritual connection I've always had something just told me just just do this just start something and like things will come of it and you know since the beginning when we had like no equipment we had a uh, our voice recorder on an iPhone and like we recorded something else on an iPhone 4 like terrible quality no infrared no night vision and uh yeah November uh 2017 was like the start of the whole project mm-hmm. and then you know January came around got my IR camera bought a spirit box and then just Sorry, I'm going to need you to elaborate. Uh, Yeah, what's a spirit box? (laughs) Uh, All right. So for those uh, listening out there who don't know what a spirit box is, a spirit box scans through radio frequencies at such a fast rate that it should not pick up any sort of like signal or whatever. So any type of voice or, you know, obstruction of the... It basically just sounds like, so if like any obstruction or word or something that comes through, it should not actually be radio interference. Spirits are said to use electronic devices to like manipulate that energy to create words. Um, There's a ton of different ITC, um, which is paranormal research device, like out there. There's so many, and the spirit box is just like the most common one. You'll see it on almost every ghost hunter show there is especially nowadays Mm -hmm. um ghost adventures is like the number one people um it's actually the number one paranormal investigative tv series in the states out of like all the others and so like this season is their highest rated season so any equipment that you see on there more than likely if you check out spirit walk paranormal on youtube um you will see us using some type of similar device to what they're using. Okay. Yeah. I actually brought the uh, spirit box with me because uh, you don't know when shit's going to pop off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I can guarantee you that Daniel's probably haunted. Oh, yeah, I guarantee, yeah. Oh, I know. He's been on this earth way too long (laughs) to not have some ghosts residing inside of his ass. Well, ew. (laughs) I'm not not checking there. (laughs) I did not bring a probe. spirit box up my ass. (laughs) It's the most most cobwebby place you'll ever find. I mean, I could put it up to it, but I can't guarantee I'm going to get anything out of there except a fart. (laughs) It might be a fart. (laughs) It's very very dangerous. (laughs) I'm not not into that. No ass play for me. (laughs) Well, no, because in the basement down here on the other side of the studio last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, about honestly, it was about this time last year. What whenever, um, well, I used to live over there. Well, there was a, a sewage backup, so that we had to bring a contractor in and dig the floor up. Oh shit! And uh, replace because the pipe had collapsed on part of itself. And while they're digging down in there, they found a bone. And the guys were like, they told my brother I didn't see it. My brother saw it. <clears throat> it was like a was it a femur? Yeah, it was a human it was like a human femur. human femur bone that was like under the concrete 
<laughs> in the basement of this house. So, uh, yeah, it's probably yeah. why you hit a fucking sewage problem, homie. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? You buried my ass. Well, you're going to have a shit problem <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. He was just trying to make his presence known. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it could be haunted. I don't know. I mean, I've never, I've never, like, I mean, I lived in that basement for ever. Now, I know that my brother's dog refuses to go to the basement. She'll stop at the top of the stairs and we'll just not. Well, I was totally cool, like the whole way down here, and then I walked in the basement. I was kind of anxious. Really? Yeah, and uh, and uh, Daniel can have that effect. <laughs> he does not make me anxious. I've worked with him <laughs> multiple times, but I uh, I don't know the this I don't know feel it feels uneasy. Hmm. I don't know. You're I, the first person who's felt that down here. I think. I, I, I don't know. Hmm. I feel I don't know a little bit unease. Uh, and, like, I was totally fine, like, the whole drive down here. Like, it's, like, a 30-minute drive. Mm-hmm. To- totally cool. And I got down here, and it's just, like, uh, like my shoulders got real tense. And maybe it's just because I've been doing it um, for the amount of time that I have been. And, like, even beforehand, like, I could always, like, pick up on stuff. It's just, I don't know. Some- something's, like, a little, like, unsettling. Hmm. Uh, maybe we'll have to pull that spirit box out That's the on. That's the static that we always get in our mics. Hey, it, it, could, be. it could be. Yeah. Electrical <clears throat> interference, yeah. you know. You never know. Yeah. Well, it comes through, like, and you can the hear headphones. it, but it doesn't record. But it doesn't record. So, it, which is weird because everything's hooked up together over there under the same, like, circuit. So, it's just coming through the headphones. It's weird. That it's is weird. And it's random. It just Spack. random. And, yeah. So. <laughs> it's like I just heard a voice on my God. So, you've done how many uh, episodes? I know you said you're close to end of season one. End of season one. Mm-hmm. Um, we have five episodes out currently, mm-hmm. and we have two that are in production and after the seventh episode gets out that wraps up season one and in january we get to start uh, filming season two so what all places have you covered God, so far? you're gonna go film in january yeah well it's inside oh okay i yeah, was gonna say no, hell no you know, like, up. You know, i can't do outside stuff like i i wish but you know um so episode one was actually only supposed to be like 10 minutes of episode two, mm-hmm. which episode one is Flinderation Tunnel. Mm-hmm. Anyone familiar? Oh, yeah. You're familiar? Mm-hmm. Mm. Why does that name sound so familiar? Well, it's a very long tunnel uh, just outside of uh, Salem, like past Clarksburg. Yeah. And it's an old uh, rail, railroad tunnel, B&O. And oh. then um, they shut it down, and there's a graveyard above it. Back in the day, some railroad workers got killed in there by like a train. Um, it's, it's over a thousand feet long. It's a fucking mm. crazy long tunnel. And when you walk up to it, oh god, I feel claustrophobic just like thinking about that. <laughs> well, here's the weird part: it, it gets twilight zony because like you walk up to it and you're like, oh, this isn't the tunnel because the optical illusion. It doesn't look like it's that far away. No, but yeah. like you keep walking up closer towards it, and then the, like the other end of the tunnel just keeps getting like smaller mm. and we made it about halfway in and i was just like is this fucking thing ever gonna fucking end and uh Jesus. yeah we actually ended up <laughs> capturing <laughs> so much shit um in like the 45 minutes that we were there that we just ended up turning it into the first episode mm. i call it the b-roll episode because it's just like first person shooter like we're mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're walking up <laughs> with the camera and then just like shit just starts popping off episode two is point pleasant where we investigate the historic low hotel and we hunt for mothman mm-hmm. so that was one of the coolest experiences um not so much of like the activity that had happened but just like the urban exploration part and then meeting all the people uh, involved with the hotel. I, I mean, I, I've stayed at the hotel previously uh, once, but not for an investigation. And then with the investigation, we ended up like meeting a couple of artists. Uh, one of which who is uh, Zach and I is like really like we're pretty close friends with him at this point. And uh, yeah, um, the the low hotel is beautiful. If anyone's in Point Pleasant, I highly recommend going and checking it out. There's an art gallery attached to it. Um, there's also a bar. Uh, in the hotel, so that's always a plus. And it's like, uh, it's not like super modern. It's all kept to, it's like time period. Like Mm -hmm. the original marble staircase um, imported in like 1905, 06 was actually, it's actually still there. It's like in beautiful condition. Like their ballroom's beautiful. Like all the rooms are just in their element in that time period. 
And so it's like a very cool, like historic place to stay. Hmm. Episode three, uh, this one, um, the Oddfellas Lodge, Lodge above Main Street Cafe. Oh yeah, I remember Zach telling me that you guys were going up there. I <clears throat> before you get into that, okay, <laughs> we did our own. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but we there was used to be a, a guy that would come into the cafe all the time, and I know I'm pretty sure that you've met him. Um, but he told us that he felt like a like an unease almost, like and so we had him look around, and he was telling us about how he saw a couple. Uh, actually, I think there was one, two, three, four four spirits there in the basement and one was a girl who had been killed there um and i forget how she had died but we actually looked it up and it was true somebody had died there and there was a fire around that area at one point and there was a couple that was killed and That's he saw it. them too and then he said there was a, a very old spirit that he saw um like from back like years like when like the town old, like first began old, no before that like oh, shit. before anything was even there <clears throat> so um so we took it upon ourselves to go downstairs and record you know obviously during witch's hour because you know and uh we heard some weird stuff we just left a camera down there and just let it sit for about an hour two hours and we watched it later and it was just really fucking creepy so did you hear any like it, did you hear things like we, Other than maybe you guys wrestling around, or like, did you just like leave it and like leave the building? We well, we went, we left it at the front, like underneath where, um, not like underneath the uh, like the sidewalk area. It was back a little bit further that we didn't pick up anything on the street if it, you know, if a car passed or anything like that. Right. But we we went on to like where the stage is at, and we're just hanging out over there, so it wouldn't really pick up as much. But we we couldn't hear anything that we were doing, and we weren't being loud. But we heard just like sounded kind of like whispers almost, but. We couldn't really make it out, and I even put it on the PA system and like cranked it and just trying to hear it. And sometimes, uh, especially with like digital recorder evidence, um, or even like the modified full spectrum cams that I have, I have to like EQ mm -hmm. certain things to hear it. So mm -hmm. I mean, it it just depends. Yeah. More recently, uh, with the digital digital recorder, um, when I'm doing like my playback. I I will have to EQ certain frequencies out just so that the voice is more <clears throat> prominent and people because like that was an issue with like the first couple of episodes is people were just complaining like oh I I couldn't really hear it that well and now it's just you know episode four was really good but this most recent episode five it was just phenomenal like you could mm -hmm. you could just hear like damn near everything so just like nitpicking like levels and like those certain frequencies that just kind of maybe i can hear it but someone else can't hear it mm -hmm. so just like making those more valid but that's fucking weird shit like mm -hmm. one i've been in that basement uh more times than a person should i guess always got fucking creeped out yeah especially that one night um i don't know if you were there or not there was like a metal show and like the power blew and everyone ran sound off a fucking generator and there was candles Mm -mm. Oh, that was. I think that happened before I, either before or after. I think it was after. Yeah. I think it was like yeah, was the the sunny time period. Okay. Afterwards, yeah. But yeah, dude, that fucking place is so fucking weird. Mm -hmm. It's creepy. Like, there, we'd have paintings because you know, like the entry to the basement, clear on the left hand side. Yeah. We had paintings up above on the right, and randomly they would be clear across next to the basement door. They would fly across there. And there would be days where we would come in and open and we'd go back to the bathrooms because we'd hear water running and all the water would be turned on. So, and we, you know, I always check all that stuff whenever we leave, make sure everything was off, you know, because water bills are fucking outrageous. So, well, I'll tell you this, yeah. the upstairs is fucking haunted. Mm -hmm. That attic, I I don't think I'd go in that attic again. There's a, there's an attic like above the, uh, the ballroom? Yeah. Or, I did not know that. Yeah, the, the big stairwell. That like leads up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's the ballroom. Yeah. And then there's that like that side room. Yeah. And then there's that door. Mm -hmm. I've never been through that door. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go up there sometime. It's because it's fucking creepy as it is. Yeah. Um. There's an Wait, upstairs. Where is the ballroom? It's on the the third floor above the cafe. 
there's a big ballroom with um, where the odd fellows used to have like their big their big room and there's still like all the paintings they had on the walls original like, paintings yeah it's it's awesome it's really a cool spot but it's it is fucking creepy <laughs> oh, try being all right imagine that ballroom mm. no lights on whatsoever and all you have as a light source is like the little bit of light coming from the door hallway. Mm. Oh, that yeah. That, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm good. It was scary. My butthole fuck. just got really tight just thinking about. <laughs> well, I wish Zach was here so he could talk about how nervous he fucking mm. gets every time we go out. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of upset that he's not here. Me too. Calling him out, Zach. Right now. This Piece is, of shit. This is the second <laughs> time for a podcast interview where he hasn't been out. Bastard. <laughs> piece of shit but but yeah the ballroom's haunted as fuck um the attic is haunted um and like our home base was that like green room on the second floor uh top of the uh, staircase you know what i'm talking about like, like the one that overlooks the uh the street yeah mm-hmm. yeah so that was like our like our home base and that that was the only uh spot that i felt safe in yeah. like the whole building the <laughs> yeah. entire time i was like maybe just so i can see the the street there's lights on mm-hmm. But yeah, once you got upstairs, it was like a completely different vibe. And well, just, I mean, just as soon as you top that, the first set of stairs, and if there's no lights on, like, because I, I think the one up to up at the top stays on. Like, a, there's one in there. I feel like it's always on. But that hallway going back to the back of the like that's. F- oh yeah. That in itself, just standing right there, is creepy. Just because you've got, I mean, it's the entire length of that building, and that building's a very long building, but it's just a long hallway with rooms on either side of it. And yeah, like during the day, like having all the lights on and stuff, it's actually not too bad. But at night, mm-mm. Mm-mm. being like alone up there, I don't know. No, there, mm. there's been plenty of times <laughs> where you can uh, hear me. Where Zach would be like, "Well, are we going there?" I'll be like, "Fuck that! All right, now." <laughs> it's yeah. just like uh, we got we got to do some other shit before we get to like the more scary shit. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate basements. Like, I fucking hate basements. So I don't. I don't know if it's just like the image of like w- walking uh, down a stairwell um, inside of a building into a lower underground part of a building, mm-hmm. and it just it freaks me the fuck out every time I think about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, dark spaces. Basically, I am the worst paranormal investigator ever. <laughs> I'm really good at what I do. It's just I'm fucking terrified of the dark, and I'm trying I f- to. I feel like that would make it like better though, because you're not putting on an act whenever you freak out. No, like if you scream, that's that's you. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, so. no, uh, hands down. I'm trying to overcome that fear. Uh, mm. Doing paranormal investigations is, is slowly um, giving me more bravery, and I think it's just because like I'm actually trying to like reach out to something instead of mm. me just being alone in a dark room and having no purpose there. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, something's here with me, and. Like I've I've made communications with like all types of spirits. Like, um, in episode four, we did um, a restaurant in Morgantown called Flower and Feed, which um, used to be the only wholesale flower and feed mill in Morgantown at one point in time. And um, the idea was between um, this guy named William Arnett and uh, John C. Kincaid. And that formed the uh, Kincaid Arnett Flower and Feed Mill. And so we're doing a spirit box session um, in the dining area of the restaurant. And we just, uh, we we kept getting William Arnett, like, coming through. And it was, like, a, a, a male's voice. And, like, even before we did um, our spirit box session uh, on the digital recorder, we had ended up picking up, like, uh, a male voice, like, responding to us. Some of our most wild, um, like, evidence is captured when we least expect it. Because a lot of the times, like, we don't hear those things in the moment. A lot of the times it's back home, we're reviewing evidence, and things just come about. And we don't know how it got there. Sometimes we'll do, like, a live EVP review, um... A lot of the times we don't hear it just because maybe it's just not coming through right on the speaker. Maybe like we're just not listening clearly like through headphones or studio monitors or whatever. And when you hear those voices when you're reviewing it and you're just like, holy fuck, what did we do? It's, uh, it's, a, little, it's a little fucking unnerving at some points. I love it. I love that, you know, 
especially if it's like a an intelligent response. Um, there, it's there, hard to come by nowadays with people, let alone spirits. Oh, trust me. I, <laughs> why do you think I investigate? <clears throat> no offense, people. Uh, just, <laughs> just sometimes I'd rather talk to the dead. It's much easier, <laughs> you know. They hardly talk back, and then mm. they they fully listen to me. Um, but as we were setting up the spirit box session, I I had to go and grab a, another tripod because we were doing like a Facebook live feed um, that night, which we had never done. And so um, as we walk out into like our home base room, uh, you, there's three different voices that are captured on my camera's microphone. Uh, one that says, um, uh, they like me. And it was a female voice. And then immediately after, there was like a like a male voice or maybe like another female voice. And it goes, why? Like real quick. And then immediately, like, no, I don't want to say immediately, maybe like a couple seconds afterwards, you hear another female, different from the other two voices. And she goes, I missed my shift. And I was just like, okay, so maybe there's these two mill working women, uh, maybe a male there, but maybe there's three like women there and they like me. Like that kind of like struck me. Cause I was like, we're the only two in there. Mm-hmm. This spirit might be talking to another spirit that, you know, Oh, Oh, they like me. They like talking to me and stuff like that. And then there's this like other one that's just like, I missed my shift. <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> I, was like, I missed my shift. Like, what'd you do? Oversleep? Yeah. You're like 80 years too late, girl. <laughs> you know how much that would suck if you think about it? Because like one of the things that I absolutely hate is whenever like <clears throat> if you're in school for a while and then you you're on a break, you know, during that break, you'll wake up one morning and you'll just be like, Oh god, I have homework. You know, or like you're on vacation and you have two weeks off of work and you're just like, Oh my God, I'm late for work. Could you imagine if like your spirit, your fucking afterlife is just spent like waking up every now and again and just being like, Oh God, I didn't go to work. (laughs) Like, Oh wait, I've been dead for 200 years. I missed my my shift. (laughs) It's like those times when you get home from school and it's, you know, you you take a nap. You don't expect to take a nap, but you end up falling asleep anyway. It's dark out whenever you wake up. It's 7 p.m., but you think it's a.m. You're right. like, fuck, I missed the bus. <laughs> yeah. You get ready. You run out the door. Yep. People are eating dinner. You're just like, uh, fuck. It's, <laughs> it's, it's still Wednesday, isn't it? And you're like, yeah. There's a fuck. What are you doing? It's Sunday. Yeah. That's what we have to look forward to. Dude, not me. Just like fucking... Burn me and scatter me around. I'm cool <laughs> with it. Go. So, what's the the number one creepiest thing that you've encountered since you started this? I'm Aside glad. from Daniel, yeah. <laughs> Is it this podcast or it's just the paranormal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I'm glad you asked because uh, we. I, I think this whole conversation has been building up to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Ep- I feel like you've been like touching on all these things that are kind of creepy, but. There's, there's got to be something. Episode five. Episode five. Yeah, uh, it's the most recent one that's out. Um, it's probably going to be the best episode of the entire season, in my opinion. Um, we did the um, WVU co-ed murders murder site, <clears throat> um, where their bodies were found, at least. Mm-hmm. So I'm not familiar with that. You want to oh, give me yeah. some backstory there's on There's a that? whole podcast on that, man. Is there? Get on that yeah. show. Yeah. Based right out of Morgantown. Yeah, um, Chromatic Media, shout-outs to yeah, uh, Kendall shout Parkinson out. and uh, his team, uh, Sarah and Jeff, who helped uh, form that podcast. It's uh, If you guys want to check that out before I give you the shortened version, uh, go to SoundCloud and look up Merritt and Karen, the WVU co-ed murders. Uh, Eight-episode series with some like bonus episodes of cool stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so... To lay down the law and give you a shortened version, uh, January 18th, 1970, set the mood for you. Uh, It's a chilly night in January. Two college freshmen, Merritt Malarek and Karen Farrell, um, they decide to go see a movie uh, downtown at the Met Theater called um, Oliver. After um, getting there, they end up running into two friends. Um, Those two friends would be the last two to uh, see the girls alive as they decided to hitchhike back to their dorms um, they got into a cream-colored sedan, uh, and um, back then there was like um, 
like a law restriction to where girls couldn't be out past a certain times. Like they had a curfew or whatever, Mm -hmm. but men could stay out and do whatever the fuck they wanted. But, um, they end up, you know, not coming home to the dorms and not even like two hours after, uh, their friends had last seen him, there was a uh, missing persons report put into the police department. So, uh, some months pass, um, that's kind of suspicious. It's a little weird. Yeah. I thought uh, isn't there like a time frame typically? I don't know how it was back then, but isn't it like twenty? Yeah. Why would hours somebody like have submitted a missing persons report? Because it's unlike the girls. After. Because it's uh, like, okay, yeah, okay. It, it wasn't like mm. that. That wasn't their norm. Like okay. maybe like uh, okay. fifteen minutes late. I gotcha. A couple hours, just like eh. Mm. I gotcha. So, a couple months pass by. Uh, let's fast forward to I believe it's April eighth. Um, the newspaper. Or the police department, one of the two, can't remember right now. Um, receive a letter uh, stating someone knows where uh, the location of the bodies are of the two missing coeds, and uh, the very detailed um, description. Uh, the guy in the letter states, um, "Go di- directly south of Morgantown, twenty-five miles plus one mile." into a wooded forest land. There you will find the bodies of the girls. Not signed with a name. Um, it's signed with a symbol, uh, a triangle. Really? So, the next day, uh, the newspaper publishes this article. On the 10th of April, um, another letter from Triangle comes in, and he says uh, pretty much the same thing. You know, enter, tw- go south directly, um, 25 plus 1 equals 26 miles. Um, there you'll find their bodies covered with brush. Um, and then he says like a really weird statement. He goes, um, the animals are now on the move. Granted, they've been missing since January. It's now springtime. And so obviously they're coming out of hibernation. The animals are now on the move. Um, so it turns out triangle has, uh, nothing to do with the murders. He ends up being like a psychic medium from Maryland. And, um, in turn, um, the girls' bodies uh, get discovered uh, a few days later. Um, decapitated, and their heads were never found. And it turned in like one of the biggest mysteries um, in our state. These, uh, these two girls um, who were innocent and had no reason to die, they were just two girls in fre- like freshmen in college, are dead because some fucking psycho wackadoo had his had his fucking way. And so, fast forward 2018, um, through uh, the help of Kendall uh, and Chromatic Media, um, conversing back and forth, um, sending me uh, files, photographs, copies of the letter, news like newspaper articles, uh, photocopied, um, original like police photographs and stuff. Um, we at Spirit Walk Paranormal ended up, you know, finding the correct location, uh, ended up having, uh, an abundance of information to make this amazing episode happen. And while we're out there, um, disembodied voices are happening. Um, we were using a, an electromagnetic field reader, EMF for short. And one of our most compelling pieces was, um, I asked, um, could you make the meter go higher than 0.5? Now, the meter is supposed to be baseline at 0.0 at all times unless some sort of like electromagnetic energy, you know, walks up to it, interrupts it, whatever. But we're in the middle of the fucking woods. We're not near a computer. Um, and like my watch or like even like a cell phone won't do anything to it really. Like I've even tried it up against like Apple Watches and like Apple Watches don't do shit. And... um you hear branches breaking like they're like something's walking closer towards us and the meter spikes to 0.6 and then like drops down like immediately. But that's not the creepiest part. The creepiest part is um, at the end of the episode. We actually don't even get to do a spirit box session because um, I turn it on, one word comes through, and that word's evil. Zach hears a gunshot, which I don't hear, He's like, did you hear that? And I shut off the spirit box, so it's not making any noise. He's like, it's like a 
It's like a boom, boom, like kind of sound. And then like as soon as he said that, we we hear a gunshot. He's like, can we leave? I'm like, yeah, fuck it, we'll leave. We get out of the woods. We're sitting by the car. Zach, don't let him shame you. That is the proper response for this situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not you shaming run. you. You run. You run. <laughs> I'm not shaming you, bro. I just wish you were here so I could talk shit on you to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to doing it behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to admit that. But uh, no, so we're sitting by the car. Where the camera's still rolling. And Zach is using a phone app. Uh, in the episode, I claim this, and I, I still claim this. I'm very skeptical of phone apps. However, this one, I believe um, to be one of the more spot on. Um, it kind of acts like um, an ovulus, which an ovulus device, uh, spirits can manipulate the you know, electromagnetic field uh, that it's producing to produce words. Now, Zach's reading through words, and then he stumbles upon... Uh, the the app generates uh, one word while we're standing there and it says dead. And then <laughs> Zach's just like, the, he, he, there was like a, like one time it said dead. And then like one time where it like really said like dead, like clear as day. And Zach goes to read a new word that had just popped up and it's hidden. But as Zach is saying hidden, just before he says it, you hear a disembodied voice very quickly. Hidden. Like, and it sounds like Zach is stuttering when you first listen to it. But if you like, we we set up like five or six replays in the episode. And you can just tell the difference that that's not Zach's, like, that's not him stuttering, like, whatsoever. And we bolted the fuck out of there. Now, analyzing it later, dead and hidden, um... The girls' bodies were obviously dead. They they are dead. But they are also hidden out there under yeah. under brush, um, like a tree and some river rock pulled from like the creek that r- runs along the area. And um, out of all the shit <laughs> that we've experienced, um, I want to say that that right there is uh, definitively probably the scariest thing I've ever had to encounter. Not for me. Like I'll, I want to check that out now. Like I want to watch it. I want to watch it later this evening. It's a it's a doozy but, to say mm-hmm. the least. Like plus I just want I want I I really like I I'm interested because in I like creepy paranormal shit like that. But I'm also very interested to see Zach's response to it because I've known Zach for a while and I love Zach. <laughs> so oh, um, he cracks me up. Oh, uh, you'll <clears throat> like once we get back into the car, you'll Zach is. <laughs> I mean, I'm freaking out too. Cause I don't know where my cell phone's at. I'm just like, I was like, oh, better fucking get a new one, bitch. Like, <laughs> just like, I, Zach's was just like, you know, uh, I, I'm glad we didn't hear that out in the woods. I was like, yeah, man, I would have left you. We wouldn't have a camera, <laughs> tripod. I was like, fuck that. I'm just, I, I would have been out. And, and some people have questioned me, like, well, why, why do paranormal investigations if you know I, I get so freaked out? Uh, in previous episodes. If you watch, I don't get that freaked out. This was like one time. All right, picture yourself in the woods at night. There's only you and your buddy, and you're hearing fucking voices coming from someone who's not there with you. Pretty fucking terrifying. You probably want to leave as bad as we did. Mm -hmm. Do we plan on going back out? Maybe. At some point. Have I been back out without Zach? Yeah, I have. Is it scary? Hell yeah. Um, like by yourself? Yeah. During the daytime, Jesus. Like, okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> you know, I'm, I was like, I, I'm, I've got some cojones, but they're they're not fucking coconuts. Like, uh, yeah, dude. I want to say that's the scariest. And then, um, like, we have oh, um, the two new episodes. I don't want to talk about the two new episodes too much because they're not out and people, you know, haven't watched them. But I will say that. Um, Episode six is a uh, retro teak. Um, that location um, on Walnut Street in downtown Morgantown um, used to be like a theater, like a play area. Like people would do plays and shit, like way back in the day. I think it was like even before the Met and uh, all that stuff. Like it was like one of the original uh, theaters. And oddly enough, there's an Oddfellows Lodge right above it. I know where that's at. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So. 
That's episode six. Um, probably <clears throat> the most heartwarming paranormal investigation episode that we've ever done uh, because we ended up talking to a very kind spirit and um, probably the least, definitely the least scary episode of the entire season one. And then episode seven, we actually did the uh, Morgantown Public Library. And yeah, first, like everything was cool. Everything was normal. You know, didn't think too much of it. And then about, I don't know, two, three hours into it, um, shit just started popping off. Like, especially when I turned on the spirit box on like the ground floor. That's where we had most of our activity going on. And then there was like this vortex of like high EMF readings, like highest that I've ever recorded. Like I'm talking like in the high 20s, early 30s. Like this thing, it was weird. And it was in the children's play area of all things. And like we were even downstairs and there's not enough equipment to breach like that concrete uh, to have those spikes happening. It was only in like a, I don't know, 10, 12 foot radius of this uh, EMF crazy reading. And it wasn't like up against the walls. It was just like in the, the children's play area, which I thought was like very bizarre. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very excited to wrap season one up and get these episodes out so we can start uh, season two here in January. Have you <clears throat> have you been in contact with the Lunatic Asylum, Trans Allegheny down there to go up and maybe do like one of their overnight uh, sittings with your equipment, or what, do they allow people to do that? So they do. However, um, it costs a butt ton of money. Oh, really? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have uh, a group um, that's going to go. It's not just going to be. Uh, the Spirit Walk crew. It's going to be um, some like other people from Beckley, but the minimum is like ten people. Um, each like separated group gets like their own floor, um, and the way that we're going to do it is like the Spirit Walk crew is going to go do their own thing, while the other groups go and do theirs. And uh, that is on the list to go. It's just it's so damn expensive. It's like 150 bucks a person. And you need ten people minimum to even go and do it. So that's insane. Yeah, and I mean, keeping up a place like that—that's you know, I mean, it's it's an awesome place. It's an awesome building. You obviously want to make sure it's still there, you know. And but that's 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 crazy. I mean, I I, I get crazy, it. Yeah. I get it. But <clears throat> you know. We're poor. <laughs> so it's like people. People are just like, "Oh, are you making any money off this?" And I'm like, "No." And it's just like I have. I been on Monster.com and seen Paranormal Investigator pop up a lot. Yeah, yeah. I don't you, think so. Do you see, <laughs> indeed? You, you think we're hiring? Yeah. Hell no, dude. I'm fucking self-employed. We're poor. Mm-hmm. Like that's why. Um, that's why you know doing the web series is so important to us, um, so that we can eventually. You know, make. I'm not saying we're all going to make a living off of it, but if something were to come about to where you know we hook a deal uh, with maybe uh, like a TV station or Netflix or wherever Netflix get at me. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, like I, I want to quote my brother um, just because like how the the show is shot and everything. He was like, it's like the Trailer Park Boys of paranormal investigating. <laughs> Um, minus the the drinking and the drugs, it's just like you know, it's it's just it's so r- real. Like we're just mm. real people out here. There's no big production team. It's literally me and my like little studio reviewing evidence and like putting this all together mm. myself. And that's like how I can justify it. Like I don't care if anyone doesn't fucking believe me. I can't do. I can't make up crazy things that these ghosts say. Like why in the world would I ever be like? Like grapevines could help. Like that's a straight up fucking line. <laughs> and like, why would I say that? Like, I, I, I don't know. Every everything that we do is just real, and that's that's what we want the people to know. It's just like it's not the highest quality production. Granted, we shoot in four K. We do the best that we can, but it's not like a big TV stations like mm-hmm. producing it. Not yet, at least, because that's where the money's at. So. So what I think you guys should do. Lay down. 
And I think this is like <laughs> too sketchy. I probably wouldn't do it. But so I know that like uh because growing up my sister had a friend who would go around to farms that had like really old farmhouses on them. And sometimes it was like auctions that were happening. Sometimes it was like foreclosures on properties. Sometimes it was, um, you know, he would just spot it from the roadside and he would stop at the people's place and be like, hey, is it cool if I go through your barn and like pick? American picker style? Like picker style. But I mean, you go out and you drive some of these back roads and there's just farmhouses all over. Like I know Mm -hmm. my great uncle that lives in Dodgers County on his property is the farmhouse that he grew up in. And I mean, that thing was built in like the twenties or something like that. And it's just like this sketchy old farmhouse out there that like they lived and died in that house for 50 plus years. Do you know how awkward it is being a, a tattooed bearded pierced up five, six little man dressed in all black Walking up to doors and being like, can I investigate your creepy-ass building? <laughs> uh, I get that way with like being like, I'm a two-time business owner, and everybody's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. This guy. Pat, pat me on that the head. Guy. Just like, yeah. good for you. Good for you. Uh, honestly, I mean, I would do it if I did not have the fear of like getting shot all the fucking time. There's some crazy motherfuckers that live in this state. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah. my, my mom has told me, um, cause they live in an old farmhouse that was built pff, either late 1800s, early 1900s. It's old. Before you start the story, I'm going to dip. You gotta go. Yeah. Okay. Why? <clears throat> cause I gotta, I gotta work in the morning. Oh, dude. I gotta go to the gym. Gotta go to the James. That sucks. So you good listeners. Love you guys. Enjoy the rest of this episode, or turn it off because I'm the best part of the episode, so that's mm-hmm. fine too. You said two fucking words. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. <clears throat> but uh, what I was going to say is, my mom has seen um, a spirit in their house, um, and she said it's a woman that's it's always like um, on the first floor because it's three stories plus a, like an old cellar type basement that's mostly dirt. She's always seen it on just the first floor. Um, of the house, and she sees this woman sitting there crying. And I've never seen it. My uh, my sister has seen it, but I've never seen it. Have you guys like? Has anyone looked into the history of the the place? Or mm-hmm. no, I, as far back as I know, the guy who lived there before us. Because whenever we whenever we moved there, I was in just going into high school, and the guy who had it before us, he hadn't been living there in years, and he used to like just keep animals in the house, like his cows, like baby cows. He would like let them run around on the first floor. It was weird. Jesus. But I guess at one point it was a, uh, not like a, it wasn't like a brothel, but it was like kind of like a drug den type. Like people just, the people that lived there were just druggies and just a bunch of sex ran in and out of there and drugs and stuff. And then before that, I haven't really done any digging myself <clears throat> into like the land or the property or to yep. live there or anything like that. So That's always something that I always try to do before going into any like investigation like morgantown public library um flinderation tunnel uh the low hotel um i to me that's what makes like our episode i mean granted other places like other shows do this Mm -hmm. but history is just important as the present man and uh, if uh something that I can connect to any of the information that I learned um, as far as <laughs> that was a weird noise <laughs> as far as like like the owners or um, you know someone who would work there someone who had died there um, any any sort of connection that I can make um, that just makes our evidence that much more you know truthful yeah uh, exp- well, you have the the history behind it. One, it it you're not just going to this random place in an episode and being like, "Hey, we're just going to look for spirits today." It's like this place used to be this, and like it, it gives that backstory to where you know and it it makes it interesting. Because if I if I tuned into an episode and they're like, "Hey, we're going to hunt for paranormal shit," here's this building, and you just go in. It's like, oh, okay. cool. Don't but, know shit about it. Yeah, but having that one one having that story it makes for a better episode, but. 
at the same time, it's like, you know about what has happened there. So it gives you a better understanding of, you know, like say on the second floor of this building, a murder happened. If you go into a place you don't know the history, you, you could go to the basement and nothing's down there. Like you wouldn't find anything. So you'd be wasting your time. Yep. So, so yeah. Like where <clears throat> significant tragic events happened mm-hmm. is, is a, another thing, which is why I think, uh, you know, the, the co-ed murder episode is just uh, one. Uh, there's so much, you know, collective energy out there, you know, thinking about that case or hearing about that case, or maybe they're just like stumbling upon it for like the first time. Um, it's feeding into those those energies, and it's making you know manifestations, whether it be like communication by voice or branches snapping or like walking up to EMF detectors or like whatever. Um, I Whenever I go into an investigation, I always kind of go in with like the lowest expectations. And, I, and I've said this before in like a, in another interview that whenever I go and I do these, it's, it's always best to just kind of expect the least and not be like, Oh, I'm gonna see a full bodied apparition tonight. And like, mm. no, that's that's not the case at all. Like the case is just like trying to communicate. And if there's anything visual that, you know, corroborates with that like communication evidence, like, holy shit, it's like you've fucking struck gold. Mm. And uh so far, like the only the only thing that like we've really captured visually um, is just like light anomalies, and you know, so far, I'm I'm okay with it. There, well, we did capture this really awesome like black mass in uh, the co-ed murder episode, mm-hmm. which um, it's it's crazy too because Zach says something and then he like apologizes, like he's apologizing for like saying whatever he said, and I was like, I was just like kind of in awe because I was like, no, dude, like I just saw a shadow, and then like very quickly across like the uh, screen, which we're shooting at IR, so any kind of bug or whatever should m- show up as like white. Mm-hmm. This thing is a fucking just black mist just shooting Ooh. across the screen, and visually, I think that would be our best evidence to date as far as um like capturing anything i mean light anomalies yeah they're they're compelling you know they and I, and i've seen light anomalies with my own eyes um during like spirit box communications and like just wishing right over where the device is and just like being able to call it out in the moment but shadow figures i see them way way more than i should um capturing them visually is a is a tough thing to do especially Mm -hmm. when like right now um we only have one camera um but now we've added um like up until episode five we only had one camera but now we have like a like two full spectrum cameras that we can you know go along like we can go different areas because right now it's just us like hanging out collectively, but now like we're able to like separate a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of nice. And um, for for doing bigger places like uh, to kick off season two, we're doing the Robinson Grand Theater down there in Clarksburg, mm-hmm. uh, that newly yeah. remodeled <clears throat> theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a big ass place. I've and, never actually been inside, but <laughs> oh, I mean it's uh it it's <clears throat> it's a big one. Mm-hmm. And when I was talking to um, the director and the uh, I think it was like the marketing and sales uh, chick, Emily. Um, they were like, yeah, well, fucking weird shit happens down here. Um, they'll just be like, because there was a house uh, that's actually kind of connected in a sense like to the, the building. And I guess that guy died and like no one found him for like a week. And uh, I guess his, I think his last name is like Drago or, or something of the sort. Uh, he's probably going to fucking haunt me whenever I come down there for mis- <laughs> mispronunciation. But... Uh, like we're standing there and then all of a sudden like we're talking and they were like it was like just after they were talking about this guy and then the fucking door behind me just fucking slams 
like <laughs> shut and, not, and they were like it, i fucking jumped and they were like yeah it's stuff like that that happens <laughs> and i was like jesus christ and um yeah after uh after some months of like planning um yeah january season two spirit walk paranormal if you guys forgot because you probably just listening to me ramble on about <laughs> ghosts and disembodied voices so i had a question um have you noticed a difference in maybe i don't know like a tone of voices that you hear or the energy that you feel based on the place that somebody like if if the person had either been murdered killed in an accident or just died have you noticed like any kind of difference in the feeling and oh yeah <clears throat> um so with every location i mean there's there's different um there's different tones of voice um we heard some like real creepy ass whisper voices um down at flinderation tunnel that were like very specific um and then you go to like the co-ed murder site and then there's like very dark uh like angry ones and and then also there was like voices that are in distress and mm. the ones in distress mm. um to me it w- it sounded like the girls um mm. and and oh like the, even the odd fellows lodge like they were not fucking happy that we were there like whatsoever mm. Because, you know, secret, semi-secret society, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Um, They were not pleased, uh, us being there. Um, We were running uh, this device called the Echo Box, which in a sense is kind of like a spirit box and a, uh, I don't know how to, basically this thing's like popping off, like syllables and stuff. But it's like reverberating, and so it's like it's literally echoing. It's an echo box, mm. and then you would say whatever you would like to say to those spirits, and it'd be like you'd say like "What is your name?" And then you can hear it repeating, like you can hear yourself repeating, and like "What is your name? What is your name? What is your name?" And, and it fades out, mm-hmm. and then s- sometimes there would be like very distinct. Uh, answers come through and like and what I loved about the Echo Vox um, and what I still like about it is that you can hear it multiple times so you can be like oh shit that's what they said that that is what they said mm. as to where like a spirit box was still top favorite device um, you you got like one shot to mm. hear that shit until you go home and review that evidence unless like you clearly hear what it's saying mm. Um, as, but as far as tones, every location is, is different. Um, finding what kind of voice it's saying it in is, uh, I don't know. It's gratifying. Mm -hmm. It's, um, unnerving a lot of the times when you're, sitting alone in your room while your fiance is at work on the night shift and you're just watching all the <laughs> creepy shit that you've been doing and, you know, you find out that, you know, the person or persons you were communicating with or whatever weren't too happy that you were there. And, I mean, you, you were there. You're, and that's another thing, like, paranormal investigating, man. It's, it is it is investigating. It's not only deep diving on history. It's not only, like, you know trying to figure out who you're speaking with it's like it's a, it's a process like you literally are a fucking ghost detective <laughs> in a sense and uh just i i don't even know why i fucking do it man <laughs> i just like i said it before yeah. i just I, I i know that i'm supposed to be doing it for a reason i don't know what the reason is but it all started with a fucking idea to just get into it and and funny thing I used to talk shit on Ghost Adventures like twenty four seven. Me and me and Mariah, she would uh, like we would watch it, and I would just blast it and like make fun of it like twenty four seven. And then after watching it all the time, I was just like, 
like I don't know I don't know why I was just neglectful of it. Maybe just because I was a fucking prick and I didn't know what to do with my life except to just like make fun of other people. And uh, yeah, and now and now here I am, uh, four years later, doing what I used to just talk shit on. And like I'm I'm a full fucking believer, man. I don't know. Like I always, I always believed in like the other side. I always believed in like you know someone's always looking out for me because you know, God forbid. Like I don't know why I'm still fucking here, but I know that feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's a weird one. You're yeah. just like uh, mm-hmm. there were so many chances for your uh, whoever, whatever the uh, the big guy, um, the the big ball of energy or whatever. He could have been like, "Eh, hey, come back." Yeah, come chill with me up in the in the the clouds with the boys, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I just feel like I've been given too many chances to like fuck another time up, and so here we are. Mm-hmm. It's 2018, almost 2019. Uh, slowly approaching 30. Life is scary. The dark is scary. So, uh, yeah, those things don't really go away. You just don't talk about them. Like I still, you know, if I'm in the basement and have to turn the lights off and go up the stairs, you leave a light on. If, no, if I no, either I'll leave the light on, but even if the light's on, I still fucking run up the goddamn oh, yeah. stairs. Dude, you're, you're, <laughs> like, you're a fucking alone in a basement. <laughs> it's like, I always wondered like what, you know, like obviously getting older and like, you know, it like older people like sixties, you know, can't walk up and down stairs. It's like, can they not? Or is it the fact that they're still fucking scared and can't run up the stairs. Exactly. That's going to be me. Oh, dude. <laughs> like, uh, hands down, uh, mm. 69 years old. Uh, well, that's mm. that's a little young. Let's say 89 years old. Mm. If, if I make it, um, you know, if, if my children and grandchildren leave my ass in a fucking basement, I swear <laughs> to God, I'm crawling out of that fucking wheelchair. I'm, I'm going to just upper body strength train as much as I can when I'm older. <laughs> and I, fuck, I will handstand my ass out of there. Yeah. I will beat them up the fucking stairs. Mm. They can take the little fucking, what do you, little scooter thing that goes up. <laughs> the thing goes like just. Yeah, the wheelchair inches. that climbs up. Yeah, fuck mm. you. Like, I will lock the door <clears throat> after I fucking karate flip. <clears throat> Yeah, fuck you guys. Fuck my future children. Like, <laughs> if you're listening to this, I'm sorry, but fuck you guys. <laughs> I need more Mick Ultra, man. Yeah, Mick Ultra, will you just sponsor me at some point? Because this is literally all I do is I just have some mix and talk shit on myself. So, yeah, sponsor me. You know, and Netflix, you know, if you're listening to this, um, you know, give me a deal. Some cool shit. Have you talked? Have you tried to get. Uh anything out there right now like have you have you talked to anybody about even like maybe a smaller company that does you know like a website with paranormal stuff on it have you no. tried to reach out yet no <clears throat> not yet um i i, I want to get like season one like mm. finished yeah um in the works um amazon prime though but uh no i i'm not saying that like, i haven't reached out to like a, a bigger platform it's just I feel like everybody's fucking into it. Like, no matter who I talk to, mm-hmm. whether mm-hmm. it be, like, you know, teenagers or, like, grandmas or, um, you know, people in the music scene, like, whoever. Everyone's just like, oh, shit, I could never do that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you could. Just uh, just got to go fucking do it. And that, and that's a, that's a lesson for all the people listening out there. Um if you wake up every day of your life and you feel like you're not accomplishing anything and all you're doing is going out and spending your money on dumb shit and you're sick of working your dead-end job, uh, just go fucking do what you want to do because that's how I have five mm-hmm. episodes out. That's why I Wasted Local Talent's a thing. Um, 13 Palm Trees, mm-hmm. um, you know. So that's why, that, I mean, shit the cafe. I quit my job to do that full time and yep. I made I've said this in previous episodes, but I've made between me and Sissy, we made a total of like six thousand dollars in two years. Personal. Yeah. Like at that place. Like people can't live like that. But nope. if it's what you fucking love to do, just do it. Just do it. Like <clears throat> I'm a very firm believer in that. And I don't want to be sixty years old sitting in bed being like with with money. Like I don't care about if I've got money or not. 
It's like if I'm 60 years old and have a shitload of money, but I didn't do what I wanted to do, I won't. You, know, I, you, won't, you only live once. Dude. YOLO. Like, but, but, you know, it's it's the truth. Like, you know, do what you want to do while, while you have the chance to do it. I should get that <clears throat> graphic on stickers and just yeet that on the, <laughs> the wall. yeet it all over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should just get, just yeet it all over the wall in a quote and just yeet. Yeah. It, it'd be multiple yeets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're listening, I say yeet. I'm not sorry about it. You can go yeet yourself off a building, and then I'll come talk to you on my spirit box two years later. <laughs> uh, people, uh, my name's Danny. I hunt ghosts and talk to the dead. You can watch my YouTube show, Spirit Walk Paranormal, on YouTube on the Art House Media WV channel. You can like our Facebook page. You can pre-order our new hoodie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, talk about the hoodies. Those things are fucking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I was like, man, I know. Like, I'm so sorry, Jeremiah. Uh, this is so late in the episode. Jeremiah uh, Friel, a.k.a. Uh, Unseen Hughes. You can follow him at Unseen Hughes on Instagram. Did our new uh, hoodie logo uh, design. Um, you can get those on pre-order at spiritwalkparanormal.bigcartel.com uh, they are 45 bucks and includes some freebies an 11 by 17 poster a sticker and a button all for 45 bucks uh, free shipping you can get your any size um, once we get X amount of pre-orders in we can actually put the full run in and then we'll have those hoodies in like a week after um, we get those but the monster hoodie is pretty dope it has a uh, me Zach and Dante animated on there with uh, an animated Mothman, Flatwoods Monster, and like this ghost anomaly looking figure, um, along with our logo on the front. And if you guys want to see a picture of that, like I said, go over to either our Facebook page um, or spiritwalkparanormal.bigcartel.com. Pre order yours today. Um, and because, like, once the pre orders are up, you have to buy all those freebies separately. So. You're still going to be paying the same price, but if you get the pre-order in, uh, obviously you get the better deal. You're getting more shit with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Unseen Hughes, Jeremiah Frill, does some really creepy, spooky work. Um, you can commission him to do artwork like we did. Um, he's very easy to work with, super cool guy, really good rates on his artwork, uh, very fast turnaround. Um, if you have any suggestions or anything, which we had none, Um, when we were working with Jeremiah, it was just like, all right, here's three pictures, um, from our photo shoot. I was like, we want it to be like this. I sent him like the shittiest sketch, um, (laughs) with a, like like a ballpoint pen. And I was like, all right, so there's like, you know, I'm here and these two are there. And then like, I want the, the monsters to like be in the background and like over, like overshadowing us. And, um, Within like a week, uh, he had sent us like a final version, and it was just fucking phenomenal. He did a great job, fast turnaround. At Unseen Hughes on Instagram, follow him, like his shit, buy his stuff. You can get his artwork. Um, Jeremiah Friel, love you, dude. I appreciate you. Um, first off, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who watches the show and has uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel. Um, we do this for you guys. Uh, we don't make any money off of this. It's just purely passion at the moment. Um, so anything like merchandise um, that we put out goes towards either more equipment or just putting out more merchandise for you guys um, or hotels or gas or food for whenever we do um, go further than just like a two-hour radius. Anything more than two hours, we try to like stay somewhere. Um, I want to give a shout out to Matt and Megan Stewart of Thunderprints for being awesome and supportive, um, for always endorsing our show. Um, very grateful for those guys for printing our merchandise. Uh, if anybody needs their merchandise, uh, printed hand pulled screen print, uh, they are the best in our area. And I want to say in like the tri-state area for quality turnaround time and, um, just, being genuinely great people. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, Jeremiah Friel. Um, Thank you so much for doing the design work on the new hoodie. I appreciate you very much. Um, 
Zach, I would give a shout out to you. I'm giving I'm gonna give you a shout out. Uh come to the next damn podcast interview that we do, uh, because this is a uh, 0 for two and uh you're starting to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> um like our Facebook page, Spearwalk Paranormal. Uh follow me on Instagram at call me Danny D. You can just keep up to date with all the shit that we're doing on YouTube, Facebook. I don't have Twitter because fuck that. It's stupid. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, Wasted Local Talent. Thank you, Daniel, for inviting me and Zach down here. You know, RIP Zach since, you know, he's <laughs> dead and gone to the world. Um, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, this, is a, this is a fun time. Thanks for tuning in again. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, give us a like on Facebook and Instagram as well. That Wasted Local Talent. So uh, I'm going to thank Judd for leaving because apparently he had to work out. I'm Danny Strakel. I run Spirit Walk Paranormal, the paranormal and guest... Eh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I run... uh, I can't even fucking talk right now. I sound like I'm 80. I'm just like telling you, <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. Jed, you're still fucking bald. You're still blind. He's going deaf. How old is time, he? 27. Huh. By the time he's my age, he'll he's going to be dust. You'll be investigating the studio. <laughs> hey, I'm into it. <laughs>